ஒன்னு Around 11 participants presented their papers on mathematic indifference peers. We will be shortly beginning with the second session of the conference. Happy to have you all here for the conference on learning to build a smart foundation using NLP. And it's a pleasure in being a moderator for such a conference. We are beginning with the plenary session too. Without taking much pulse I invite Ms Akshaya of second year BCA department to give a brief introductory to the speaker of the session Dr R Tirumalai Selvi ma'am Good afternoon everyone it is my privilege to take this opportunity to introduce the chief guest of the section 2 Dr R Tirumalai Selvi assistant professor Dr R Tirumalai Selvi has continuous experience in teaching for the more than 28 years She has held various dignitations teaching assistant and lecturer in past currently she is working as assistant professor in pg and research department of computer science of government and arts and science college she has completed her phd in computer science after completing her mphil and msc in computer science her Areas of interest include software engineering, data mining and data warehousing software, engineering, artificial intelligence, machines learning, data science image, processing and social networks. She has held different positions and has taken responsibility across her career as an executive member and organizing secretary for various workshops, doctor community members, research supervisor, judge chief guest for many events in addition she has held positions such as academy audit member chairman for chair persons for conference and webinars external reviewer technical committee member and subject experts she was also invited to talk about a various computer science fields across institutions she is member of a csi she has participated in many workshops presently she is class coordinator and charges mss and mphil dr r tirumala selvi was organizing secretary for a program open source frameworks for web connect management system sponsored by university grants commissions funding rupees 52000 during feb 2008 for two days at the department of computer science Sri Subramani Sami Government Arts and at Tirthani She has contributed as a lesson writer for preparations of MCA CBCS 
new lesson study materials for information security, mobile computing and Python programming in Madurai Kamraj University, Directorate of Distance edu Education. Dr. R. Thirumali Selvi has published more than 58 works in various national and international journals and other publications including IEE, UG CARE, UGC, UGC, Indexed Scopus, and CSI. She is an editor for iManager, Journal on Mobile Applications and Technologies, and Journal on Software Engineering since 2015. She is also editor for the Journal of Advanced Research in Intelligence Systems and Robotics since February 2020. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Akshaya, for the guest introduction. Next, I'd like to welcome the speaker of the session, Dr. R. Thirumalai Selvi Mal, to address the conference. Welcome, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Akshaya, thank you, Akshaya. Thanks for your nice introduction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the founder and chairman, Dr. Uh, NR Dhanabalan sir, and also the secretary NRD Prem Kumar sir, and Prem Chand and secretary, and also the principal madam, uh, Inita ma'am, and also vice principal Safia Salaman ma'am, for giving me this opportunity to share my ideas and views for the um, conference. That is the name of my, that is the title name um, Learning to Build a Smart Foundation Using NLP. And also, I would like to thank the convener and also my friend, Mrs. D. Moganavalli, ma'am, head and department of mathematics, and also my close friend, I know her for the past 20 years, Mrs. S. Mahalashmi, head of the department and department of computer applications, and also uh, Mrs. R. Gladys, head uh, PG department of computer science, and also other members, Ponaras, sir, Catherine, and Sam will sir also, and other student coordinators, Gayatri, Loganathan, and also Abhineshwari for putting that much effort for conducting this conference in an excellent manner. So once again, my heartfelt thanks to one and all. Yeah. Sir, shall I share the screen, sir? Oh, yes, ma'am. You can. And now is it visible, sir, my screen? Uh, no, ma'am. Not visible. Yeah, same thing. Uh, yeah, sure. No, no. Sure. I think now it will come. Yes. Now is it visible? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Fine, sir. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Yeah, my topic I'm going to discuss about learning to build a smart foundation using natural language processing that is uh, shortly called as a NLP. So have you ever girls uh, have you ever wondered how Siri or Alexa understands what they see if uh, do they know language whether it may be English or Tamil or any other way. So if you know these questions, this question ever crossed in your mind, then let us enjoy this celebration. So first we will see what is the difference between natural language and computer language. So natural language has a very large vocabulary, but computer language has a very limited vocabulary. And the natural language is easily understood by humans, but computer language is easily understood by the machines only. And then natural language is ambiguous in nature, but computer language is unambiguous. This is the difference between our natural language and the uh, computer language. So then next we will see what is NLP. NLP is a natural language processing. So this natural language processing refers to the branch of AI. It comes under the topic AI only, it comes under AI, artificial intelligence, which gives the machines the ability to read, understand, and derive the meaning from the human languages. That is the main concept behind the NLP. 
see this diagram in the middle we have the nlp and the outer we have a computer science ai and also our human language okay if we take the sentiment analysis for example i am giving one example sentiment analysis which uses the natural language processing to detect the emotions in a text okay the text means whether the text may be a positive one or negative one or it may be a neutral one okay for sentiment analysis we are using this nlp concept and moreover business people often use the classification task to automatically detect the brand sentiment on social media okay so with the help of this brand sentiment they will detect the urgent customer the customer's need for for all need the urgent one okay uh, customer issues and they they need to respond the respond to the customer's need immediately or monitor the overall customer satisfaction so for that purpose also we are using the nlp that is the reason behind another example sir we can say machine translation summarization ticket classification and spell check also then we will see the history of nlp how the nlp how nlp will arise okay in 1950 in the year 1950 alan turing published an article titled computing machinery and intelligence okay which pro proposed what is now called the turing test as a criterion of intelligence and then turing test is nothing but the, the same person alan turing in 1950 it is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit the intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human so nowadays we are calling this as a turing machine the person developed the machine called alan turing the name of the machine is called turing machine okay see the diagram here i have three things one is a is my computer and b is my uh, is a human being and c will evaluate whether both the computer and the human identify product uh, identify the same or not okay see suppose in a computer i have a shoe human also uh, identify it as a shoe so the evaluator will check both uh, will check the both the computer and also human whether both are same or not so this is a history of the nlp then next one why we need nlp what is the need of this natural language processing see when we look around us in apps messages we have a whatsapp social media like instagram facebook youtube blog uh, google searches and many other channels every each and every second these channels are constantly generating a big amount of text data so the data size becomes large and large the growth the size becomes a uh, large and large so every day billions and mil millions and billions of data text data are generated so for understanding the large volume of text data and highly unstructured data you note the word the data is are unstructured they are not in a structured format okay it may be from any source it is not in a uh, uniform way it's a unstructured data sources so we can no longer use a common approach every time okay so that's why nlp comes inside so to handle the large volume of data and handle the unstructured data we need nlp and then other reasons are to handle a big amount of text data suppose you have to identify a, uh, in a given sentences you want to identify whether the sentence is a positive negative or neutral so uh, manually suppose i want to identify it's a manually means it's a very easy in a given simple sentences means easily i can identify and i will complete the task within a second okay but suppose you have a millions of sentences and perform the sentiment analysis what should i do how is it possible definitely it is not at all possible and it would take time so how long it will take you to complete the task so i think how oh, you get the point so in today's world machines can analyze more language based data than humans because the human got tired okay by analyzing the data but machines won't so the humans without tiredness and in an unbiased and consistent way so for handling large amount of data nlp plays a vital role and another concept is to structure the i already told unstructured data two things are common one is large volume of data to handle and then another one is the unstructured data these two are the important uh, behind the nlp so human language is surprising one uh, complex one and diverse also so we communicate in unending manners both verbally and in writing also so every language has a unique set of grammar in tamil suppose we have a, 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 a letters two parts of letters and yela yela kanam and all other things also so every language have its own properties if you take the english means a to z 26 letters so unique set of grammar and syntax rule terms and slang also so for many applications such as speech recognition and text analytics this nlp helps to resolve the ambiguity in language and add some useful new
atmospheric factor. So for these two reasons, we are using and we need NLP. Then we will see the, what are the use cases of NLP, where we are using the NLP, what are the application, okay, the areas. So first translation application, I want to translate something or I want to detect some fake news and then classifying emails, whether the particular mail, my incoming mail contains a spam or ham, uh, is it right or wrong. And then I want to predict the disease, whether cancer is tumor is present or not, any other disease. And then error detection, sentiment analysis, already I told, sentiment means whether the particular sentence or the person is in which mood, positive mood, negative mood, or as a neutral, okay, for sentiment analysis. And then personal voice assistant, it is nothing but our Apple Siri or uh, Alexa or Google Assistant, okay, personal voice assistant and all, we are using the NLP. Then, what are the applications of NLP? It's a very important one. Each and everywhere we are using the NLP. See, question and answering, it is like a chat part. I, I hope that girls, you all know about the chat part, okay? If I'm giving, if I type some questions means my chat part will give me an answer, okay? So it focuses on building the system that automatically answer the questions asked by the human being in a natural language. So here we have the, well, any problem? Shall I continue? Hello, sir. Mahalishmi, any problem? Shall I continue? Hello? Hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can continue. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But some noise was there. That's why I'm asking. Okay, okay ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, uh, that is a, a chat part. Question answering one. And then next one is the uh, spam detection. So, it is used to get the unwanted email. See the diagram here. I have an email and then my NLP, the machine learning model, it will identify whether my mail contains a mail is a spam mail or not a spam or a ham. Okay. And then next one is sentiment analysis. That is to analyze the attitude, behavior, <coughs> and the emotional state of the sender. Okay. See this diagram. Here we have variety of smileys and someone, something is laughing, sorrow, joy, and other things and that. Okay. So these are all the various applications of NLP. And then other applications like machine translation. So I want to translate a text or speech from one language to another one. Suppose I want to uh, translate uh, from Tamil to English, English to German, German to French, any language. See here, I'm giving an example. NLP is one of the technological addressable, it's the English one. And the same thing will be converted into a Tamil. So same English will be converted into a Tamil one. And then we can easily uh, check our spelling also. See here, nature language processing, language. It contains some spelling mistakes, so it will correct the spelling by uh, giving the language correct spelling. And then my speech also will be recognized and chat part already I told. Then I can extract the information also from the text and all. And the natural language understanding. So these are the variety of applications of the NLP. Then next we go for the components of NLP. So the NLP contains two components. One is a natural language generation and another one is natural language understanding. Okay, you we'll see what is for each and everyone. Natural language understanding, NLU, it helps the machine understand and analyze the human language by extracting the metadata from the content, such as it may be a concept, entity, keyword, emotion, or anything else. So the NLU is mainly used in business applications. We use NLP, NLP, NLU to understand the customer's problem in both spoken and also written language. It may be the customer problem, maybe in any format. Okay. Then NLG is it acts as a translator which converts the computer's data into a natural language representation. It also involves text planning, sentence planning, and text realization. And I want to say that this NLU is difficult than NLG. Okay, these are the components of NLP. Then next one, see uh, how this natural language is generated. See the diagram here. First, I have the connecting. After that, I analyze this learn under the natural language uh, generation, connecting, then I analyze the data and then write what writing uh, I am writing. So he determines the semantic way in the words using the database generates a new text. Moreover, this NLG is a use of uh, already I told you know it is a use of A computer A, A program and uh, it is from a data 
set okay so this is a natural language generation the next one what is the difference between this nlu and nlg so nlp primarily compromise two major function one is a human to machine translation that is called as a natural language understanding another one is a machine to human translation it is called natural language generation so i can say that nlu is a process of reading and interpreting the knowledge but nlg is a process of writing or generating the language okay then it produce a non linguistic output from the natural language but here nlg produce constructing natural language output from non linguistic input that is the difference between nlu and nlg so next we are going to the important uh, thing in what are the phases of nlp so any data any data any data or data set will be pre processed okay data yeah, can you please mute your mic what is that Participants, can you mute your mic? Yeah, thank you. So the phases of NLP is any data set will be any data will be pre-processing. Pre-processing is nothing but we we have to clean the data. Huh? Uh, we we remove some missing data and then some uh, sometimes the data may not be a unique format. Okay, so the cleaning is very important. That is sometimes data content noisy. Noisy means some unwanted things are done. So everything will be removed. That is called as a data pre-processing. And the second one is the algorithm development. Okay, so these are the two phases, main phases. for nlp with python here i am using the for natural language processing we are using the python platform only and we use three tools one is a natural language toolkit it's a very famous and popular tool nltk even i also have some programs if time permits i will show you the program nltk program genism and intel nlp architect so this nltk natural language toolkit is a open source python model which contain data set and also some tutorials also it's a very famous one uh, to solve the NL nlp problems we are using the nltk toolkit then how does this text pre processing because i told you know the first step is the pre processing one we must clean the data we remove the noise in the data so how does this text pre processing in nlp work see these are all the variety of steps normalize tokenize remove the stop word and stemming or lemmatization so i will explain each and every model in uh, in my future slides okay so see the example jenna went back to university so after normalization what i will get jenna went back to university the capital letter u will be removed and it will be replaced by small u and then tokenize tokenize means we split the sentence into each, uh, split the sentence that is jenna went back to like this you have to split the sentence then remove the stop words stop words means here uh, uh, that is back to these are all stop words so you have to remove the stop words and the next one is stemming and lemmatization that is jenna go universe that is a stemming stemming means we have to uh, find out the word from the base one okay that is a stemming and or lemmatization so this is this is a pre processing steps under the nlp the next one is a uh, so data pre processing that is uh, uh, the, again the same thing tokenization punctuation removal uh, stemming lemmatization post tacking stop word removal html tag removal so this is this are all the variety of phases comes under the data pre processing so it is a, uh, i can say that this nlp is also a branch of data science which deals with a text data but sometimes we can uh, deal with a numeric data also natural language processing means mostly deal with a text only but you can uh, we can do the operations in numerical also so text data is available to a great extent which is used to analyze and solve the business problems but before using the data for analysis or prediction or anything else processing the data is very very important okay so to prepare the text data for the model building we perform text pre processing okay so these are all the variety of text pre chunking lemmatization cut off speech tagging and all next one yeah we, we we will see one by one the various phases first one is the, first one is the tokenization so tokenization means i am giving one example natural language processing so here i am splitting the sentence by natural language processing so it will process your raw text and chop chop means cut so cut into small tokens see these small tokens can be basically a word it may be a word or sentence or character or number or anything else and it involves uh, getting a rid of certain characters such as uh, punctuation escape sequences and spaces also 
so each word is a kind of token so sometimes i am giving welcome to nlp learning i am broke uh, that is this uh, this sentence is broken into the following tokens like welcome to nlp learning so this is the way we are doing the tokenization even though uh, in the tokenization also we have some problem we face some problems or some challenges also there so some of the basic challenges are what is the best way to split or cut the sentence is there any best way or method and then will it be wise to just split all the what about the non alpha numeric characters suppose i am having uh, letters and also combination of letters and digit also so how can i split see if it is a natural language processing fully alphabets only but suppose my sentence contains a new uh, digit also number 1 to 9 so if it contains alpha numeric characters mean how should i split the data split the sentence like period or space or something so one has to decide how to treat the apostrophe okay and then what about the split in the two letter word suppose i have two letter word like west bengal how can i split and then what about the compound words i have it may be in sanskrit or german so these are all some of the questions faced in front of me these are all the challenges in tokenization okay then next one stop word removal so this is another phase in nlp i already told stop word is nothing but the, the uh, that is uh, in the bottom i have given some uh, stop words like a and and or b by for these are all some of the samples of stop words so here i am giving some example suppose uh, geek for geeks a computer science portal for geeks so it contains some stop words but the next one without stop words so it is i am removing a the uh, the character a letter a and then for so i remove some of the stop words and can listening be exhausting only can can be removed b also removed so listening and exhausting so likewise the stop words are the words which are filtered out before or after the processing of natural language text so these are all the some of the samples of uh, stop words you must remove the words then next one the another phase is a normalization phase so normalization is a process that converts the list of words to a more uniform sequence see the uniform sequence is nothing but here i am getting variety of text from the user raw text he visited london uh, that is a sentence case another one is a small letter only he visited london another one is contain another contains a full of capital letter so next one is some uh, confused form so the text may be in any form i am getting the text from the user in any form and after normalization process what i will get and the output is he visited london okay so if i am getting any form of text i will get the correct output so here some of the some another some examples are two more it contains some digits also two more two m m r o w uh, t o m r w so it may be in any format after normalization i will get the correct exact word tomorrow and then suppose i am giving b4 actually we are using actually we are using uh, uh, these kind of words in our whatsapp only how are you instead of putting y o u you will put u only okay b4 before o t w on the way and suppose i am giving some smileys it will give smiley okay so i uh, suppose i am searching uh, you search for the usa so you may hope that you can it contains u dot s dot a u dot s u s but not u s so any words like school schools school apostrophe s so all those things can be normalized into a single word called school only okay that is the beauty behind the normalization so any the text may be in any format it will give the correct one then another phase is a stemming stemming means cutting okay suppose if a tree contains several branches i cut the branches that is called stemming so normalizing words into the base or root form that is a meaning behind the stemming so i have to normalize the words into their base or root form okay uh, in tamil we can say virtual that is a thing root form so suppose i am giving consult consultant and consulting consultative so any format it will give the root form is as a consult only another example is like nancy gets in the the word nancy stemmed into nancy so yes got chopped chopped means cut the word cut the letter yes then caresses become car e is got chopped so that is the beauty behind the stemming so it will uh, convert into a root form or base form next phase is a lemmatization lemmatization means that is a reducing the word to its lemma that is it is nothing but the the process where we take individual tokens from a sentence and we try to reduce them to their base form see the example here changing change changes change so all the words can be 
translated converted into change uh, converted into a form called change okay suppose i am giving nanny means nanny initialization initialize uh, computer compute computing so all those things computer compute computing means computer compute compute means again same thing only and then computing means compute because the uh, uh, lemma word is a compute only okay so if you, if the text can be in any format it will say it will uh, give the correct one that is a concept behind the lemmatization okay then uh, how to build the nlp pipeline okay so nlp pipeline here first step is the sentence segmentation i am breaks i breaks the paragraph i breaks the sentence into separate separate sentences see this is a sample paragraph that is the independence day is one of the most important festival in every indian tradition it is celebrated on the 15th august each year so we have to find the full stop first wherever uh, we have the full stop you break the paragraph into a separate separate sentences okay see here independence day is one of the important festival then it is celebrated on the 15th august second one and this day celebrates Mm, independence in the true sense likewise a big paragraph can be divided into a sentences that is called sentence segmentation okay and the top also i'm giving one more example hello world the blog post is about uh, sentence uh, segmentation like that you have to uh, breaks the paragraph into separate sentences that is the first step step two second one is a pos tag pos is nothing but part of speech tagging part of speech is tagging is uh, tagging is nothing but in our earlier classes school days like 10th or uh, 12th you have studied about the noun proper noun verb adverb adjective preposition and all so same thing also here the in nlp also we have the same so it, it contains a noun verb adverb adjective and determiner determiner is nothing but a and okay suppose i am giving the example google something on the internet so in the sentence google is used as a verb although it is a proper noun i am giving one more example suppose i want I, I, the sentence called i want an early upgrade this is a sentence in this sentence my nlp will find that i as a pronoun want as a verb and is a determiner early is a adjective upgrade is a noun likewise it fits the uh, sentence by each each word by word and then give whether it is a proper noun noun or adjective or determiner and all that is the concept behind the post of speech tagging okay this is step 2 then third one step 3 named entity recognition it is also very very important one we can uh, shortly call this as a ner the term ner that is it will identify the noun phrases what do you mean by noun phrases it is connected by direct subject or object relationship how the objects are related i am giving one example sentence like john wants to purchase a new samsung phone okay see here how it fits john is a proper noun want verbs to is a part purchase is a verb new samsung phone is a noun so it automatically find the name of the people place product and organization company name and all in text across many languages see one more example how should we work founder adam newman lipsky's manhattan penthouse for dollar 37.5 million see here we work this is the organization adam newman means is the name of the person manhattan is a place okay and then dollar 37.5 is a monetary value okay in that way it will find the relationship find the names of the people place product and organization that is a thing called ne or named entity recognition then next one chunking chunking is a interesting concept it is used to collect the individual pieces of information find the individual pieces and group them into bigger pieces of sentences okay so the bigger pieces are known as a chunk so the nlp chunking means grouping of words and tokens into chunk see this example you can easily understand we have a pink as an adjective that is i am uh, saying the sentence called we we got the pink panther in the sentence pink is adjective panther is a noun okay and uh yeah uh, that that is a that's a determiner and all these are together chunks into a noun phrase see one more example here cat a b c i b m x y z so here after chunking i divide into six groups and uh, split into three categories different categories see i am combining i am chunking further grouping by theme wise okay i combine into a theme wise so cat and hen that is a one theme 
so it comes under the animal category and then ibm and kfc it comes under company ibm and kfc are companies and then xyz abc are alphabet okay so likewise based on the themes i again divided into separate categories and one more example here the first one is it, uh, it won't get uh, that is i'm not uh, do the operations of chunking so simply i have written 914272 like that so after chunking 91 91 is nothing but it's a country code and 427 is a god girls can you answer me what is 427 any one of you 427 stand for what is a telephone number actually what ma country code 91 is a country code country code 427 state code state code that is uh, for suppose for chennai we have a 044 for madurai we have 0452 okay that is uh, that is called the that place particular place code chennai means some other code we have uh, madurai we have trichy we have so that is a code and then another uh, remaining things are called as a telephone uh, uh, telephone numbers only so after chunking it will divide as a country code state code and telephone numbers okay <clears throat> next one algorithm development so it's a very very important concept algorithms algorithms means what first in the algorithm means we analyze the algorithm make a design and do the experiment with the help of some of the tools it may be a python r or any tool so do the experimental work and then implementation implementation is writing coding and de deploy it okay so this is a basic step comes under the algorithm development this algorithm development contain two things one is a rule based system and another one is a machine learning based system rule based system is nothing but it follows the linguistic rules so it is from the year 1950 to 1990 we follow rule based system okay and still the rule based system is used the next one is a machine learning based system in the machine learning based system we use statistical methods okay it learns to perform the machine learns to perform the task as per the training it feed it fed and adjust the methods while processing more data it will adjust automatically when you process more number of data so through the repeated processing and learning learning by again again the machine learn by itself so the nlp uses a combination of machine learning neural network deep learning and other its own rules also so in the here the machine learning based system it combines several methods like machine learning neural network and deep learning also these are the two algorithm development in nlp then what is the importance of natural language processing it's a very important uh, important one we we have to see that is here a few uh, an interesting uh, sentence given by alan turing that uh, already i told in the first second slide itself he he only invented the turing machine in the year 1950 okay for doing calculation so a computer could be considered intelligent when can you say a computer should be a intelligent one if it could carry out a conversation with a human being suppose the computer will uh, speak talk with me the computer talk with a uh, speak with a human being okay interact with a human being but without the human realizing they were talking to a machine so i don't have a feel that i am talking to the machine okay the, the, then only i am saying that a computer could be considered as an intelligent one so the human don't have human realize that they were talking to a machine so it's a very beautiful uh, code given by alan turing this example is here i was some filter i machine my system detect whether the my e contain ram or hash okay so nlp is helping making the computers more powerful and intelligent one and we know that the human can speak a number of languages and each language has its own set of rules Girls, can anybody tell me uh, how many languages we have to speak? Like Tamil, English, German, French, etc., etc. What how many languages? Anybody answer? Yes. 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 Hello. Okay, girls. Hello. The last slide I will tell you how many languages we have. So NLP enables. Uh, pardon. yeah okay okay nlp enables us to communicate with computers in our own language and perform a wide range of language related tasks so today a huge amount of unstructured data generates online we know that 
there is a huge amount of data billions of data will be generated through social media and online in the human life so nlp has made it possible for the industry to structure this highly unstructured data collection this is the importance of the nlp then next one is the how nlp works working principles of nlp see here uh, we have a lexical analysis syntax analysis semantic discourse and pragmatic we will see one by one uh, and suppose i am giving the input sentence after uh, getting the input it will go for morphological processing then syntax analysis parsing will do in the parsing we have two steps lexical and grammar then for semantic we follow some semantic rules syntax means grammatical mistake semantic means the meaning okay after that end we have a pragmatic analysis in that we have the step called contextual information so by humans have different sensors we have different sensors to read and hear but computers have programs and microphone to see and hear and then human have brains for processing the input but computer process the program for processing the respective input only so while processing it turns the input into a code programmable code that is easily understood by the computer this is the working principle of the nlp we will see one by one briefly with an example so here uh, another working principle that is uh, london is the capital and most popular city of england this is a big very uh, uh, there is a paragraph is a very big paragraph here the paragraph i am giving the content only that is it talk about the paragraph talk about the london only so first i am giving the london and under that uh below we i have to find out the concept what are the concepts uh, there is uh, the, the paragraph should contain so first the heading is london concept is under that we have the it is the capital of united kingdom most populous city in england founded by uh, romans like that okay so first one is a lexical analysis lexical analyzer categorize the entire input text into word sentence paragraph okay then syntax analysis already told it's a parser Yeah, it will check the input text grammatical errors okay so words are arranged in such a way that the relationship between the words can can be identified so what is the relationship between the words i am giving you an example suppose i am saying agra goes to the punam this is a uh, sentence given by me agra goes to the punam is there any meaning in that agra goes to the punam it doesn't make any sense okay so this sentence is rejected by the syntactic analyzer it don't have any meaning agra goes to the punam and then semantic semantic means i already told it is a meaning semantic means it will give the meaning okay it is a meaning of the sentence so here nlp checks whether the text hold the meaning or not whether the particular text contains a meaning or not so it tries to understand the accurate meaning of the text so the semantic analysis suppose i am saying dry water is there any word contain dry water no we have a hot water or cold water but there is no sentence uh, no word contain dry water there is no meaning at all so that is a semantic analysis it will reject that word then discourse integration means uh, that is the meaning of any sentence is greatly affected by the preceding sentence the previous sentence so it figure out the meaning of immediately preceding and also succeeding sentences suppose for example i am saying the word that in the sentence he wanted that he wanted that means he wanted which one so which one means i have to see the previous one after that only i can say that the particular person want which one okay it depend upon the previous sentence only the next one is pragmatic analysis here the analyzed text is integrated with the real world knowledge for extracting and actual meaning okay that is a pragmatic analysis then next one yeah what are the techniques used in natural language processing so the two major techniques broad techniques are syntax and semantic already we know what is syntax syntax means error semantic means meaning so syntactic analysis it is an analysis which focus on understanding the logical meaning of the sentences or parts of the sentences see the example um, that is here the syntax arrange the words in a sentence to make the grammatical sense suppose i am giving two sentences the lion is a ferocious animal and one more sentence i am saying ferocious is an animal a lion see both the sentences have the same words but the words are jumbled am i right but my lexical analysis would not be able to tell that the second sentence is syntactically correct see this is a wrong one ferocious is an animal a lion is there any meaning in the sentence so it doesn't make any sense okay then parsing already we have seen that is parsing means the origin is from the latin word par par means part part of the word 
so it is used to draw the exact meaning or dictionary meaning okay each and every word we have a dictionary meaning from the it will give the dictionary meaning from the for the text okay so it analyzes the sentences grammatically that is syntax analysis checks the text for the meaningfulness suppose i am saying the sentence like give me a hot ice cream see we have a coffee and all we have a hot coffee and cold coffee but ice cream means it is always cold only so there is no word contains a hot ice cream so it would be rejected by the parser okay this is a technique in nlp then syntax analysis another technique role of a parser how the parser will work in nlp so uh, the is a process of analyzing a series of either in natural language or in a computer language and fulfilling the rules of a formal grammar see here i am giving some example grammar a sentence can be divided into noun or verb noun can be divided into proper noun and then determiner and noun verb can be divided into uh, verb or noun phrase like that okay then uh, apple is a noun verb is eight is a verb determiner is a and and all see how for the for the same grammar how i am going to build the past tree okay so first we have a sentence it can be divided into noun phrase it's in a tree structure noun phrase verb phrase and noun can be divided proper noun verb noun phrase and all see here tom is a proper noun eight you know eight verb um then determiner and is a determiner apple is a noun so in that way we can draw a past tree from the existing grammar then next one the same syntax analysis word also can be segmented you can divide the split the word it is called tokenization already we have seen divide the large string of natural language into different words see the input backgammon is one of the oldest known board game in its history can be traced uh, tra traced back nearly 5000 years and all see how the input see the input how it can be divided into separate separate tokens backgammon is one of the oldest likewise it has to uh, divide it to separate separate words and all that is the concept behind the uh, segmentation or we can say it's a tokenization okay then sentence breaking it is also a divide a large piece of text into simple simple sentences see uh, in tamil we can say um, how can i say todal vakiyam thani vakiyam similar to is uh, similar in our uh, sentence breaking so todal vakiyam means continuously we have thani vakiyam means each and everything is a separate one see i have a sentence we had a trip to darjeeling where we stayed for 10 days it's a continuous sentence so how my nlp split we had a trip to darjeeling full stop there's one sentence another one is we stayed for 10 days likewise i have found my book which was lost my book was lost i have found it two separate sentences no one knows where he has gone he has gone to some place no one knows the place so a single sentence can be divided into split up into two separate one okay that is the thing behind the sentence breaking the next one morphological segmentation morphology morphing that is it divide the uh, divide the words into smaller parts that is a morphological segmentation breaks the words into morpheme that is a basic semantic unit so uh, many nlp application contains this morphological uh, concept only and it is important for uh, rich languages like arabic and hebrew languages we are using so see the example unreadable so separate smaller smaller parts the the word can be divided into smaller parts un read so un is not un means not unable i am not able to do i am unable to do so i am not able to do read is a root word able means i can do can be done okay so that is a uh, thing comes in the syntax or morphological segmentation okay then governments government yes like that it's uh, the word can be uh, divided into smaller smaller parts then stemming stem means already i told we cut the branches of the tree cutting so suppose i am giving uh, the words like waited waiting waits all Uh, can be cut uh, stem into the word uh, base word wait only divide the word into the root word root word is wait so tamil so root word is wait only so it is a technique used to extract the base form of words by removing the affixes waited ed is affix waiting ing is affix okay so remove the affixes and give the root word wait so all the words are coming from the root word wait only okay cutting down the branches of a tree into its stems okay then next one is lemmatization see i am giving the word like leaves leaf so here uh, all the, the these two words are combined into and then 
is the same word as a leaf. So, uh, lemmatization is such a, it's a text normalization technique only. In NLP, we are using and switches any kind of words. Here also, we are using the base root mode only. So, more or less, stemming and lemmatization, uh, we feel both are same, but there should be some differences. Uh, uh, lemmatization is a normalization technique. Okay. Then, uh, this is another interesting example for semantic techniques. See, uh, or uh, are these the same person? All the four persons are same. As humans, suppose I'm, I'm saying that I'm saying, I'd, uh, surely I definitely am saying that all are four only. We can see that they are the same person only. Only the difference is their facial hair only. So the human being can easily identify, easily make the differentiation that difference that all are same person only. The difference is only in the facial hair only. But how can a machine learning system will identify all the four are same? It's very difficult. No, human can easily identify, but machine it is very difficult. Okay. So we go for the semantic technique. Such kind of uh, problems we go for a semantic uh, to solve these problems, so semantic technique. So the purpose of semantic analysis is to draw, extract the meaning, or you can say the dictionary meaning, and you deal with the meaning of the words, and how the semantic analysis is different from the lexical analysis. So, uh, studying the meaning of the individual word or studying the combination of individual words. Okay. So, the individual words can be combined to provide the meaning in the sentences. I will give an example for that. Suppose if you analyze the sentence, Ram is great. That's the sentence I'm giving. In this sentence, the speaker is talking either about the Lord Ram. Okay. Lord Ram or the person whose name is Ram. I don't know whether the Ram is a Lord Ram or the person name called Ram. So, to get the proper meaning of the sentence, we are using the semantic analyzer. Okay. Then next one, semantic techniques. This is another technique called word, sorry, word sense disambiguation. See here, we understand the words of the different meaning based on the context of the uh, usage of the sentences. That's the word in the sentence, the context of the context, the word or the meaning will change. Yeah. So, if you talk, talk about human languages, there are ambiguous words. So many words can be interpreted in multiple ways depending on the context of the occurrences. It derives the meaning of the word based on the context. See the example here. I see the diagram. Uh, my target word, my goal word, I have to find out the word kiwi. Okay. Here I have the repository, resources, database. So database, several words are there like kiwi and other things. So my aim is to find the word kiwi. So we are fond of, here this is the context. I am giving that. We are fond of fruits such as kiwi and banana. That is the context given by me. So the machine will identify. I am giving the target word also. I am giving the context. The machine, that is a word sense disambiguation. WST, the system will identify whether the target word is a fruit or anything else. So the machine will say that it is a fruit only. Why? Because here in the context I am saying that we are fond of fruit. So, definitely my target word kiwi is a fruit only. So, we have another meaning uh, called kiwi is a bird also. Okay. But my machine will identify exactly, correctly identify that the kiwi is the fruit only. Because my context is, in my context, I am saying that fond of fruit, fruit word will come. So, kiwi is definitely a fruit only. That is the output. Another example I am giving you. I can hear the bass sound. He likes to eat grilled bass. Okay. So here the word boss denotes a different meaning. The first sentence, the boss is the word of the meaning of the boss is different. And second, also the meaning of the boss is different. See the first sentence, it means frequency. So I can hear the frequency of the sound. Okay. But the second sentence, boss means here fish. He likes to eat a grilled fish, like grilled chicken, like that. He, he uh, likes to eat the grilled fish. So here the meaning of the boss is fish only. So based on the context, the meaning may vary. Okay. That is the concept behind the word sense disambiguation. Then again, the name, the identity recognition, already I told, it, uh, it correlates, it gives the relationship between the location, uh, time, the monetary value, percentage, person name, and all. Already we have seen, Jim is a person, ACM is a corporation name, 2006 is a type. Already we have discussed. One second, for your relaxation, I'm going to play a video. Enjoy this video. Yes. <laughs> 
person to communicate or speak in their language. Say a language like us. For example, LP or computer measurement, Herman Bunn's form. The INIA is a form of LP and the most important part. It involves identity, information, check and identification, intercessory to find categories. An entity based thing that is consistently referred to the text. And the is a form of LP. Any is much like the previous <coughs> as capable to assemble words. This is to the fact that the word is capable of understanding mathematics, tactic relation. It is also able to analyze classes to tell as high level automatically. This is any applicable performing or task. Keep learning in just the repetitive work itself. And such as, for example, new time Yeah, that's all. Friends, I hope that you have enjoyed the video. That video supports the concept of NEA, that is a, uh, what's the concept behind entity recognition. I told you, you know, the relationship between the person and then uh, place, location, year, monetary value, and all. Okay. The next one is why the final one why nlp is difficult nlp is difficult because ambiguity and uncertainty exists in the language so ambiguity means uh, there are different types of variety of ambiguity lexical ambiguity syntactic referential lexical means it is a presence of two or more possible meanings of the sentence for in a single word for example i'm saying manya is looking for a match so in the above example the word match referred to either manya is looking for a partner is life partner or Manya is looking for a match. It may be a cricket or any other matches. So the presence of two or more possible meaning of a single word. A single word give different meaning. That is a lexical ambiguity. Syntactic means the presence of two or more possible meaning within the sentence. Suppose I am saying that I saw the girl with the binoculars. So did I have the binocular or did the girl have the binocular? So two different, two or more possible meanings. That is called syntactic. Referential means uh, when you are referring to something using the pronoun. For example, I am saying, Kiran went to Sunita. She said, I am hungry. So in the above sentence, you know, uh, you don't know who is hungry, whether Kira, uh, Kiran or Sunita. That is called referential ambiguity. Uh, something we are using the, uh, referring to something, we are using the pronoun. Okay. That these are some difficulties behind the NLP. So what are the challenges of NLP? It is the most difficult problem in computer science. Understanding what we humans are saying is very complex. Okay. Uh, and tedious task for machines. And the humans are capable of using a number of languages and wide range of words. And it is difficult for the computers to understand so many words and rules also for delivering a meaningful message. So we can use an abstract form of any language or sarcasm. A number of ambiguities arise in the implementation of the NLP by machines. Moreover, in, that, in such situations, it becomes difficult for the NLP to decipher the exact meaning of a, what the person is trying to say. So the machine is machine found very difficult to identify the meaning because with the human, uh, we have a variety of languages. Okay. So that is a thing, challenges. Another challenge is I asked the question, there are more than 6,500 languages in the world. Girl, there are more than 6,500 languages in the world. Each and everyone have their own syntactic and semantic rules. And even human also struggle to make the sense of the language. So the machines, for, to understand the natural language, it first need to be transformed to something that they can interpret. So NLP, we have syntax, semantic analysis, 
are the key word to understand the grammatical structure of a text and you will identify how the words are related to each other in a given text okay you have to convert or transform the text into something machine readable format but it is a difficult one so these are all the challenges of that nlp then finally we have variety of libraries nlp libraries for doing our problems scikit learn is a very famous library people research people and everyone people are, uh, industry people and those who want to write a code they are using the scikit learn library it is a wide range of algorithms for building the machine learning models in python it's a, uh, based on python only written by python and nltk is a very popular tool i told no all nlp techniques and pattern is a web mining model then spacey q5 genisub so the famous are scikit learn nltk genisub is three as the people they uh, the most most popular libraries in nlp then uh, again the python top library same thing only nltk uh, all the necessary setup features text flop it's also a open source solution spacey individual communication with client genisub and core nlp are the top python libraries nlp libraries then what is the future nlp already i told it will identify the spam in the mail current and future users language will be translated voice assistant and chatbot apple siri google assistant alexa sentiment analysis text summarization is the future of nlp and one more thing i want to say the famous person microsoft owner bill gates nlp he said nlp made it possible for machines to become our friend okay it made it possible for machines to make our friend to become become our friend so uh, if i using nlp means myself and nlp will become a good friend okay that is a famous person bill gates he said in a for particular meeting that is in a founder of the microsoft and the stage in nyc that meeting and all uh, he used the term nlp make it possible for the machines to become our friend uh, my dear friends is very important one what about the career opportunities while learning uh, studying nlp nlp is one of the emerging branches of ai we know and the scope is quite promising one and it may help you to find yourself in one of these jobs in a long term or short term career it may be any type nlp you can become a nlp engineer application developer application analysis chatbot developer you can create your own chatbot okay so now we have a new concept called chat gpt okay chatbot you can develop your own chatbot also speech and text analytics engineer ai scientist and all so the present domestic pay scale of someone with nlp skills who have the nlp skills range from 4 lakhs to per annum i am saying 4 lakhs to 27 lakhs per annum depending on the level of expertise the person possesses so a lot of lot of career opportunities available um, when you learn when you know the nlp okay you can create your own chatbot also and you can release like the um, google so let us continue celebrating the magical nlp by learning more more and more so never girls never let down your passion my best wishes for your bright future thank you thank you so much ma'am for your valuable thoughts we are beginning with the conference session now it's time to invite a paper presenters in order so firstly i would like to invite arti e of women's christian college Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Proceed. Good afternoon. Can you see my screen, ma'am? Yeah, able to screen uh, see your screen, but uh, make the full screen, ma'am. Press F5. Yes, ma'am. Full screen. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Is it visible? So good afternoon, ma'am. Yes. Um, 
my topic is about a face emotion based music recommendation <clears throat> okay and then um, in my research paper it helps to find the first um, the best machine learning algorithm firstly and then it is used to detect the human's emotion by capturing the human's face and then the system will be recommending um, <clears throat> to the human, which will help the person to ease his uh, directed emotion. So whatever the uh, human's mood is, this, um, the played music along with the quote will be displayed. <coughs> and, and then um, it will help the human to overcome the current emotion, where, such as um, when the, emo the, the human feels angry, uh, it will play a smoothening song to help to the person so that is, um, the person's mind will get relaxed and a quote will be displayed along with that. <coughs> the domain I'm using is machine learning. Uh, whereas we all know that machine learning is, um, in machine learning, the machines learns, uh, uh, learns by itself by using certain algorithms. So the algorithms I'm um, going to use in this research papers are, uh, K nearest neighbor algorithm, support vector machine, principal component analysis, random forest classifier, and naive based classifier. So all these algorithms are under supervised learning. So these algorithms, um, as we all know, supervised learning is um, used when the models are trained by using labeled input data. So the input data will all, uh, already been labeled. And then, um, so I'll give a short introduction about these five algorithms. The first one came here as well. Uh, uh, sorry to disrupt you. Uh, uh, Mahalashmi, ma'am, can you tell me the time limitation for the presentation of the participants? Sorry to disrupt you. Uh, Mahalashmi, ma'am, can you tell me the time limitation? ma'am. What ma'am? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, Arti, you have to finish your presentation by two minutes. Okay. Okay, Fine. okay, ma'am. Fine, so no, these are, yes, ma'am. So these are the algorithms I'm going to compare, ma'am. So the uh, this is the um, table of comparison of my literature review. I have uh, done my literature review for about uh, twenty papers, and as a result, what I have found is um, support vector machine SVM algorithm is the best algorithm to perform this emotion detection. And along with it, I have uh, found that. Uh, support vector machine along with RBF kernel. There's a there are several number of kernels, but uh, RBF kernel along with SVM algorithm performs very well so that the accuracy percentage have been increased and the functioning of the uh, emotion deduction uh, have taken less much time. And then um, I have done the implementation. The I've used data sets for image and then data set for music, which was taken from Kaggle, uh, the public uh, website, and the data set consists of a uh, training set and testing set uh, around uh, 16,000 images, and music file consists of around uh, 2,000 songs. And then the um, language I've used is Python, along with Streamlit, which is an uh, which is used to develop my user interface. And then um, the platform is Anaconda Spider Man. I have added some of my screenshots here. Um, so this is my home screen, home page of my um, implementation project. And then um, this is the input I have given. So in this uh, image, I was smiling and the output I have got is, you're feeling happy right now. And along with a quote will be displayed along with it. And also a music will be played along with it in the background. And then if the uh, human's face is not clearly visible, the output will be uh, shown as a uh, retake the picture. So then um, as the result, uh, after implementation, I found that uh, KNN uh, algorithm, SPM, uh, RF, and Naivase and PCA, was, uh, 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 comparing these five algorithms, I have uh, got that um, SPM uh, support vector machine have been the best algorithm with an accuracy of uh, almost 99 percentage. And then um, as a conclusion, I would like to conclude that the support vector machine along with a radial basis function has been detected as the best machine learning algorithm to perform phase emotion deduction. 
uh, after the literature review and also after implementation, I found this um, output map. And these are some of the references. And that's it. Mm. Arti, yes, Arti, you have done an excellent work, Arti. Even uh, my research scholars, even, uh, they won't do such kind of works. You have you made a comparison of all the algorithms and then find out the emotion. It's like a sentiment analysis, am I right, Arti? Yes, ma'am. Positive, negative. Uh, so based on the music only, okay? So yeah, uh, your face will be a positive one or a negative one only. Okay, it's so excellent work. You made a comparative study also. Yeah, can yes. you tell me why, why, what is the use of this RBF while using in HVF? RBF kernel, ma'am. So mm -hmm. normally, uh, kernel is used to uh, map in uh, the input, uh, the non-linear observations into a higher dimensional space, ma'am, um, which uh, through which we can separate the um, inputs. So uh, uh, in that RBF kernel, which is known as a radial basis function kernel, mm -hmm. it's a kernel mm -hmm. function, which is used in machine learning. It helps to find a non-linear classifier. Whereas, yes, um, I'm clear. Yes, huh? yes, I'm clear. I'm clear. I got the answer. Yes, yes for non-linear only. Excellent, yes, Arti. Fine. Nice Thank presentation you. also. And you have studied more. Yeah, my yes. best wishes for you. Thank Good. you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Arti. Next, I'd like to invite the next participant, Niranjana S. of Women's Christian College. <clears throat> I'm going to see my screen, ma'am. Yeah, yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to another person here. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma from doing my MSc Computer Science Technology in Women's Christian College. So my topic is uh, so my my paper topic is virtual switch based on augmented reality and gesture recognition technology. So my IoT project, as we all know, IoT uh, stands for Internet of Things. That is, uh, which means we uh, we'll be able to access and control uh, daily usable equipments and uh, devices using internet. Uh, so the main concept of IoT is that. Um, uh, things will be embedded with electronic software and uh, we can also use sen sensors uh, to the internet and which enables uh, exchange of data without human inter interaction. So, uh, so the, the project, uh, my project uh, has the ability to um, enter into the virtual world and handle virtual objects using hand gestures. So here it is, um, the main goal is to uh, make it um, uh, more in, more usable uh, by using uh, virtual 3D home appliances instead of actual home appliances. The problem difference is that uh, some people uh, tend to uh, forget to off, off their electrical appliances when leaving their home. And also like uh, nowadays there are the uh, Alexa and the other uh, speakers have been commonly used for controlling the home appliances. So for that, uh, actually the users will give commands uh, and using that commands, the um, device will be operated. So it is found that it is difficult to use uh, such voice recognition in a noisy environment. So to mitigate all these problems, uh, I've been used uh, augmented reality technology and gesture recognition technology in this project. <coughs> For as introduction, uh, what is augmented reality is that it is an uh, enhanced version of um, the real physical world. That is, uh, it can be achieved through uh, digital visual elements, uh, sound or other sensory stimuli. So here I've used sensory stimuli as in, in uh, using hand gestures. So, for example, uh, the one main example is that in the picture, you can see that a man is uh, uh, pointing his camera to an empty uh, space. So, there you can see a furniture and all the other uh, furnitures. So, uh, this is exactly the uh, example for augmented technology. So, here I'm using another technology known as gesture technology. Also, <coughs> like the, we have no, we all know this, like uh, you, have, you need to put a stone or anything in a, a cup. So, here when you uh, point your camera to the uh, target image using hand gestures you can if there's no actually the real stone or something so just virtual so you can actually um, use hand gestures to 
develop this project. Uh, so this main, main objective is that uh, here um, uh, break the uh, barriers and limitations of uh, network constraints, security blo blockage, fire firewall uh, breakage, voice amplitude error, and uh, physical failure of wet hand access. Here, um, uh, the main um, objective is that uh, this project does not contain any wired communications. All wireless because you're only uh, only be using hand gestures. And uh, there'll be virtual bat buttons which will be floating on the air under the virtual environment. With this gesture, you can uh, control uh, home appliances. Uh, next, I've done the literature review for 20 papers, uh, compared uh, uh, the technology and the method methodology used in each and every paper with their reference in inferences. Uh, the main methodology used is here is marker identification. Uh, image recognition and feature extraction. So marker identification is nothing but a marker is just an image which uh, can be identified uh, with other images. And uh, here the virtual elements uh, can be brought into the real world. So that it, it, does, it does nothing but uh, it will um, recognize the marker in any space and it will uh, give the information about the orientation. And also image recognition. The um, image recognition is, uh, uh, is, a is a technique where you can uh, display the virtual information. And also feature extraction consists of two parts. The first part will detect the interest points in uh, markers that obtain from the uh, primary uh, input data. And it will detect using uh, co corner detection, blob detection, edge detection, and or thresholding. So this is the workflow of the methodology. Here, first, you need to activate the camera. Uh, and immediately, you'll, uh, the, the video will be displayed. And uh, from the video, you'll be able to identify and uh, trace the marker and extract the features. From the extracted features, the user uh, will be given uh, options to uh, to perform the action. Uh, this is the workflow diagram of the model. As I said, uh, you can also use mobile or any uh, gadgets for this. Uh, here, you, when you point uh, uh, when you point your uh, gadget to a specific location of a specific target, you will be able to um, control the appliances. Uh, also, you, we can you, we can. Uh, uh, Develop this project using many sensors. Here, from the uh, image, you can see that um, if you wanted to uh, control the appliance fridge, there'll be a current sensor and voltage sensor will be uh, used. So, from the analysis, I've compared the uh, my different microcontrollers that can be used. So, these are the microcontrollers, and I've uh, compared the features. So, next important equipment that should be used is the uh, opto rel relay module with opto coupler. So a relay is nothing but it's an uh, operated switch. That is, it consists of uh, input uh, uh, terminals for a signal or multiple control signals, and it also has uh, operating co contact terminals. So the main advantage of using a relay um, in a project is that it does not have any direct or hardwire connection, uh, and also it will help to pro pro it will protect against the high voltages that uh, might harm the controller. So these are the descriptions of the image. So a discussion of conclusion, it is found that the, um, as I told the uh, uh, limitations earlier, that is the uh, security blockage, firewall blockage, voice amplitude and error, are, uh, everything will be reduced. And also uh, since it is gesture-based automation, any failure due to voice amplitude is not necessary. And also it is found to be highly effective as it uses only low power fiber optic lines for data transmission. And recommendations uh, for currently uh, uh, only in the field of gaming and entertainment industry, uh, AR technology is widely used. So my suggestion is that it can be also used in healthcare industry such that um, in the field of radiology, oncology and training, because um, the, for, for, like, for MRI scans or um, uh, images and all, it would be helpful to take critical decisions and the references. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Niranjana. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, nice work, Niranjana. You have used the concept of IoT. Am I right? Nowadays, IoT plays a vital everywhere. Yes, in not only in household items, in hospital, healthcare, anywhere we are using the IoT. You are using, I think, you are using Arduino board. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, yeah. Can you tell me the cost of this uh, project, your work? No, ma'am. I've uh, not done the implementation. Not implementation. Can you, but tell me approximately. Uh, um, like only the microcontrollers and sensors cost me like uh, seven hundred or thousand. Because nowadays micro microcontrollers are the sensors are high in price. No, that's why I'm asking. Okay, yes, because yes. Uh, 
Suppose the person who don't have a hand means what he will do? Sorry to ask this question. Because just a hand gets a regression only. In our kitchen and all, we are using chimney. Nowadays, yes, we have a yes, uh, gets a regression, hand gets a regression to on and off. Am I right now? Yes, ma'am. If that person don't have a hand means it's very difficult only. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's a somewhat negative question, but for you, simply I'm asking. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Nice work only. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Next one. Thank you, Niranjali. I'd like to invite the next participant, M. Savitra of Women's Christian College. Yes, ma'am. It's visible. So see, visible. I'm Pavitra. I'm doing my computer science and technology in uh, Women's Christian College. My, my topic is uh, image graphic caption and interpretation system. This uh, study aims at uh, building a image caption system that will automatically generate a caption for the given input image. It uses both the concept of natural language processing and computer vision uh, to build a model that will automatically generate a caption for the given image. Uh, the aim is to create a caption that will help the user to understand the image better. Objective is to analyze and uh, objective of this uh, research paper is that to analyze an image and give its detailed description to the user, build an appropriate uh, model to generate captions for the given image, and to compare different models and uh, to build. Uh, caption system using the best model that gives uh, high accuracy rate. And I did the uh, literature review for about 15 papers and these uh, six papers were uh, close to my uh, context. So I have selected these six papers as my base paper. Uh, here, uh, most of the papers have used both, uh, like, have collaborated the CNN plus uh, RNN models. CNN, uh, the basic concept is that uh, CNN, uh, it takes the image and will extract the features from it. And the RNN is used to process the uh, sentences and uh, generate a caption that is related to the features that are extracted from the image. And then data set I have used for my research is a Flickr 8K data set. It has about uh, 8,091 images and each image has five uh, caption that uh, describes it. And then methodology, this is the flow of my methodology. First, and then code is art. Uh, the images are given to the encoding model and the data the process and the features are extracted. Then uh, uh, the decoder will have the list of captions. It will tokenize each uh, unique word and embed these words separately. And then uh, the features and the tokenized words will be uh, mapped with the help of LSTM model and then the captions are generated. Data pre-processing is for the image caption. I have, uh, uh, I will first convert the pixel data into NumPy array so that uh, the model will, uh, model will process it uh, because it cannot process pixel data. It will only be able to process NumPy array data. 
and then uh, i will process like reshape the image to fit into the model size then encoding i have uh, used both uh, vgg19 and the inception v3 models and uh, i'm going to compare the uh, vgg19 model and the uh, inception v3 model and uh, choose the best model that uh, generates better uh, caption and the pre processed image will be fed into the model uh, these models uh, the last uh, soft match layer is removed so that uh, the classification layer uh, will not work only i'm only using the vgg19 model till its uh, feature extraction part and then the features are stored in a separate graphical file then for the decoder uh, the set of caption that we have will be uh, sent to the decoding decoder model and it will tokenize each unique word and the unique word will be converted into integer tokens and then the each integer uh, and then these integer tokens will be sent to embedding layer uh, which in turn convert it into vectors because rnn model can only process vector and not uh, integers then the lstm model uh, this uh, feature extracted from the encoder and the uh, the embedded like, converted the uh, tokens that vectors from the embedded layer will be sent to lstm model which will map each vectors to one feature of the image and then the captions are generated so conclusion is that uh, uh, at the end of the research we will have a system that will automatically generate a Uh, caption that will describe the image better and uh, with, with the help of this research, research paper we have concluded that uh, using the attention concept in uh, cnn models will increase the performance of the model and then uh, combination of rnn and cnn is uh, best suitable to build the model so these are the references thank you ma'am okay okay pavitra yeah the, the advanced concept advanced topic you have used in your research paper nlp also you are using that is just now i have explained the concept am i right now nlp yes, and deep learning also you are using and in deep learning you have combined two models cnn and rnn also can you tell yes, me the training and uh, testing data set percentage uh, 80 and 20 now 80 20 80% for training and training and testing okay fine We have used two models, VGG nineteen and Inception something only thirteen something. Yes, ma'am. Which, uh, which one is C? Uh, yeah, which one is CN? Which one is RNN? You have combined two uh, models. You told no. No, ma'am. Uh, VGG nineteen and uh, Inception V three are for encoder. Encoder is for uh, CNN models. Both are LSTM deep learning. Models. Both are uh, deep, deep learning frameworks only. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. VGG nineteen and Inception. But you told that you have combined CNN and RNN. Where you combined CNN and RNN? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have included the LSTM model, right, ma'am? Hmm. LSTM. That LSTM is RNN model, and uh, VGG19 and uh, Inception yes, are the CNN model. Yes, you have combined the CNN frameworks and also the RNN model, like LSTM by LSTM. We have. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, can you show me the experimental result you have? The caption. Uh, caption. I have not completed. It is halfway through my. Undergoing process only. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Then only you came to know that which one is uh, that uh, will tell you the accuracy. Mm, okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so ongoing process only. Anyhow, we have very nice, uh, the nice concept only. Yeah. Uh, why don't you implement this uh, tokenization and other things in NLP, NLP toolkit? Why don't you choose? You are using Python uh, only. It's also good only. But you want to split the tokenization under all means. You can use it. You can go for NLP also. Try to implement in NLP. Which review have selected? Selected at this uh, Python works well. Okay, compared yes, to NLP. Okay, that is also another kind of tool. We can use any uh, tool. That is also one. Fine, ma. Fine. Okay. Uh, my best wishes for you to finish the project earlier. Okay. Thank Fine. You. Okay. Next. Thank you, Pavitra. Next, I'd like to invite the next team: Anna Chako, Miss Anne, Miss Mary I B D P I S of Women's Christian College.
Am I audible, ma'am? Is my screen visible? Yes, visible, ma'am. You are audible. Make a full screen. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> so my paper is automated question paper generator. Um, I am using the rapid application development methodology to implement the software. So rapid app application development, also known as RAD, is a software development cycle methodology. So uh, this is known for its continuous evolution rather than waterfall methods where the entire process is completed and then only testing is done. Um, here, yeah. RAD has a few limitations and one of the limitations known is that you have to make quick decisions and there are very uh, less importance given to requirement planning. So I have combined requirement prioritization along with the RAD methodology. And for requirement prioritization, I'm using Moscow technique. Anna, sorry, ma'am. Uh, you are going to the storm. Sorry, ma'am. I can't hear you. Uh, you proceed, You proceed. Okay, ma'am. I think. Yeah. You proceed, ma'am. The objective is to develop the software using RAD as well as combining the requirement priorities to generate a question paper using question banks. So this is the basic RAD methodology where there's requirement planning. There's a cycle of prototype development, testing and iteration. And after the cycle is done, construction and deployment is executed. So the RAD methodology is four phases are these. And I uh, and to finish the cycle, the user has to give the input. And until the user is not satisfied, the cycle will keep repeating. So in two of my literature uh, review papers, they have mentioned that the user has to give constant input. And this, in, this increase in interaction is an advantage for this software. And the each uh, and for the each function, uh, so, cycle you can add functionalities or you can manage the functionalities that has already been added to it in another paper they said that requirement planning does not have enough importance which causes some difficulties in the future and in another paper the key drawback observed was that they had to make hasty decisions so one of the projects they added another method along with the rad methodology for their execution this is why i have combined a requirement prioritiz prioritization. So in the prototype cycle, after the requirements are updated by the user, I am uh, implementing requirement prioritization using the Moscow technique, where the requirements will be sorted into four categories. One is the must-have requirements, which will definitely be there in the prototype. The should-have requirements, which will um, also be there, but with less importance given to it. The could have requirements might be there or might not be there based on the development and the won't have requirements will not be there in that cycle. So here, uh, grouping them helps us to create a better prototype rather than implementing one requirement each. And the won't have requirements is not that it will never be there in the software. It's just that during the cycle iterations, it will later update the prioritization to must-haves. So for my software, I have to, uh, there are two modules. One is the question bank and one is the question paper. So only using the question bank, the question paper can be generated. And inside the question paper, the model and the distribution is a must. So this software depends a lot on the workflow of the modules. This is why I've chosen RAD. Because here you can finish one module and then continue to the next module, which will give you a better running and development environment rather than changing everything from the scratch when the user wants an improvement. So the conclusion is that this RAD methodology combined with requirement prioritization is used to give the requirement planning process more importance. And this can be used when a flexible environment is needed, when the uh, development has to be faster or it has needs high functionality. The recommendations of future works is that in uh, two papers, they mentioned that RAD methodology as such is fit for small scale projects, 
but with a combination of requirement prioritization we can try implementing it in larger scale um, projects and then check the qualitative and co quantitative analysis uh, these are my references um thank you for the opportunity and your attention yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, Anna Chako. Yeah, yeah, I have taken. I have worked from software engineering. Actually, yeah. nowadays people uh, they don't want to use software engineering. Yeah, my PhD research was based on software engineering only. I am very happy for that. Okay, you have taken from Thank software you, engineering. Yeah, fine. Yeah, you told that you have combined uh, two models, life cycle models. One is RAD, and another one is a MASCO. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, uh, Masco is the existing model, or is the new one? It's also a life cycle it's model. A, it's an existing prioritization technique, ma'am. Technique, Masco. It's a life cycle model. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, any uh, database? Yes, ma'am. There's a the database bank? for the question bank. Yes. Nah, yeah. Which database you are going to use? MySQL database. MySQL. Wait, what's the front end? Front end is Django. It's a oh. framework. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where did you collect the data? Do you have any idea for data collection? Is there any limitations, memory size or question bank? Any mm, question numbers? That is the questions. Any limitations in the questions? It has to be uploaded as an Excel file. So whatever mm -hmm. memory that the Excel can store will be accepted, but more than that will not be. Will not be. Okay, fine. And uh, uh, that, uh, the implementation, I think uh, you haven't started. So far, I think uh, the implementation is almost over now. Almost over. So, uh, yes. a front end Django and back end MySQL platform. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, you store the question bank in your database and then in what way you have generated the questions? It's a random order, ma'am. In the random question only. paper, the user has to choose a model in which they want the question paper to be and they have to choose the unit distribution using these conditions. Um, the data that fits these conditions are retrieved and a random question is chosen in place. Ma so the machine will choose the questions randomly. Am I right? Yes. Like two marks, five marks. So yes, uh, I think that hereafter we don't have jobs to set the question paper. Usually I set the question paper for WCC. In the morning also I got one question paper from COE office. But hereafter, if you implement this project means uh, in your COE, they won't call us to set the question paper. Am I right? What, uh, Anna? Hmm? <laughs> that okay. would be the okay. ideal output. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, very nice concept. Okay. Uh, Anna, one more question I want to ask. Yes, uh, did you compare uh, this RAD model with any other existing model? How can you say that this RAD and Moscow will perform best compared with the uh, waterfall spiral V model and all? The thing is, ma'am, this uh, software access depends a lot on the user interaction. So, because the user will be mostly interacting with the system, they have a lot of inputs to give and the output as well. So, mm. RAD is uh, one of the models which highly depends on the user input. So, that after each cycle, we are refining it according to the user. You do? My suggestion. Yes, ma'am. My suggestion is you compare with your result with other models also. You must give a proof. Okay. Yes. And then you prove your accuracy. It's my suggestion. Okay. okay. Yes, Fine, ma'am. Ma Congratulations. Ma Fine. All the best. Next candidate. Thank you, team. Now it's time to invite our next team. D. Charuchitra, P. Uma Mahesh, and S. Priscilla Devakiribai of 3rd BCA from Annai Violet College. Yes, yeah, sorry. Jafia. Still, how many students are there? Ma'am, uh, totally 14 students are there, but only 7 students we are going to accommodate, ma'am, selectively. Yeah, already uh, 4 over, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, 6 more. Yeah, six remaining, more. remaining 6 more. 6, six more. more, okay. Yeah. So, okay, because now the time is 3.45. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why I'm asking. We told, the to we told the participant for 2 to two, 2 and a half minutes. Okay, okay. That's why I'm asking, not which one. You Proceed. can even ask at the end of the session also questions are there. Each and every student ah, I will yes, ask a question, ma'am. Generally, it's easy for me to remember. Yeah, ah. yes, ma'am. Sure. Six, six, six only then, ma'am. No issue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah.
okay my next uh, next student proceed <laughs> Yeah, what happened? Are you ready or sh sh shall we call some other some another student, ma'am? Suppose if she is not at ready. Net, network, 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 network issue, ma'am. Another next participant I'll call. Ah, next participant she'll call, ma'am. Rihanna, she'll Rihanna, you called the next participant, Rihanna. Mama. Yeah, she'll be in the last. I don't want to waste her time. Yes, Istia, are you ready? You can start. Istia Ahmed and Kumaran S of third BCA. Ma'am, whoever is ready, call that person, ma'am. Not in order. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Presenting it through mobile, I think so. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Proceed. I'm a Manchia from third BC, ma'am. And my teammate is in Kumaran. Yes, yes. Fine. We are going to take topic about generic, generic algorithm in data mining. First, we index, uh, first index of the topic, what we are going to present. Abstract introduction, overview of generic algorithm, and this one is important one. Six phases of generic algorithm application, advantage, disadvantage, and what abstract man generic algorithm is a technique inspired by natural selection. Christian. Crossover and mutation to evolve population of potential solution. And introduction, ma'am. Gentry calculation is a data mining is an optimized method of data. It's not audible.
not able to hear ma Sir, your screen is moving, but I'm not able to hear your voice. It seems to be network issue. Network issue, huh? network problem. That mobile unable to get connection. Mm, yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, yeah. Conveyed. No, no problem. Sorry, ma'am. No issues, ma'am. We have such kind of technical issues as well. We have no problem. Yeah. I think this is another theme. Yeah, Taru Chitra and Uma Magesh. Another yes, one. one, the previous one. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah, good afternoon, ma'am. Is audible only. Proceed. Okay. So, a very good afternoon to one and all who are attending the national conference. I'm Priscilla from BCA from Anayvalid Arts and Science College here to present a concept-oriented topic for today's presentation. Here are my teammates, Charu Chitra and Uma Mahesh. A presentation topic is about accident detection and alert system using Android application. So these are the subtopics which we're going to see in the upcoming slides. So here is the abstract of the concept. Generally, in most cases, when a road accident, the rescue team authorities are not informed in time. So due to this delay and because of the traffic congestion, the rescue team reaches the spot very lately. So leads to increase in death rate. To overcome this issue, we have come up with this accident detection system idea, which helps the rescue team to rescue people on time and to reduce the risk of deaths. So this detection system consists of a sensor, GPS and GSM module. The GPS will track the current location of the concerned user and the GSM will send an alert notification to the nearby hospitals and police authorities. By getting the concerned alert notification, the teams will immediately work. Nextly, the objective will be continued by Ma Mahesh. So here we're gonna see the objective. This application aids in having a better coordination and keeps all the concerned bodies and authorities informed and alerts them quickly, which also saves time in rescuing an accident patient. When a person meets an accident, he is usually not in a condition to interact with an application on his phone and ask for help. In such situation, accident is detected automatically in user app based on sound reading and sensor reading. User app continuously sends for such accidents. The application quickly sends notifications to the nearby ambulance, nearby hospitals and nearby police stations. The ambulance will keep updating the patient status. Hospitals can also update status of the admitted patients. Also, user details are shared with police authorities, which helps to see the details of the user. The next slide will be continued by Charu. Uh, so we are going to see the hardware requirements and software requirements. Uh, the hardware requirements, which is used for the applications, is uh, laptop or PC, uh, 13 processor system or higher, uh, 4 GB RAM or higher, 100 GB ROM or higher, uh, Android phone uh, 6.0 and above. Uh, the software requirements are a laptop or PC, 
Windows 7 or higher yeah. and Android Studio. Uh, but there is a disadvantage. Uh, internet is required for sending accident detection report. Uh, if there is no active internet, uh, the accident report sending fails. Uh, here, the reference link is given below. Uh, finally, I conclude with this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, mm, it's a very good idea. Actually, it's very useful for uh, the people you know, who met an accident. Really, it's a good idea. Useful for the society also. Yeah, yes, I have only one question, ma'am. Yeah, yes, suppose ma uh, the person met an accident, I mean, who will uh, give the information from his cell phone? Uh, automatically. To do. Phone automatically. Yes, okay. When the phone falls down using the uh, mobile uh, automatically the uh, alert notification will be given to the concern stations and whatever hospitals. From the phone itself, the message, the alert message will be sent to the hospital and the police station nearby. Yes. Am I right? Yes, that is your idea yes, now. So, yeah. suppose if I met an accident, mean from my phone. So, uh, how it will be informed? How? Uh, using the application, ma'am. The actually the mobile phone has a sensor named Tilt sensor. Hmm. So, using that, uh, the sensor identifies and uh, the notifications will be processed and sent using the created Android application. So, you have already created one app, and the app will be in your mobile phone. Am I yes, right? Um, Actually, the, uh, the, app, the application is uh, is an ongoing process. We are uh, we are creating yes. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Very using, yeah, yes. using okay, that. Okay, um, okay. Can you tell me GPS is GPS and CSM sensors you are going to use? I told you no. GPS means what? CP CSM means what? Uh, G Global position system um, GPS. Yes, I know. Yeah, because we in our uh, Google Map and all we have that one. Ah, what yes. is CSM? What is CSM? GSM. Can you tell me the expansion? I also don't know. That's why I'm asking. You don't have any idea. Okay, okay. You in uh, you just refer what is CSM. Okay, okay, but, but I search for. Yeah, yeah, you have to search. You have to search. Not an issue. You just. Yeah, Search and know what is CSM. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah, how the trends are will be useful for your uh, work. Okay, uh, and then your third uh, that uh, team member, he told that you have two drawbacks in this. Uh, yeah, internet connection. Yeah, internet connection is a major role. Suppose if there is no internet connection, means how can you overcome this problem? Even if you don't know internet connection, because even any people can meet an accident. Yeah, okay, no. uh, we don't we can't say that each and everyone have the internet facility in their mobile. Okay, yes. so without internet connection means there is no use at all. There will be a high risk of death only. So how can you overcome this problem? You just find out. Okay, okay include sure. include that 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 concerns also in your work research work. Am I right? Sure. But it's sure. an excellent idea. The society immediately needs such kind of things. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Proceed and uh, try to finish it. Okay. Thank you. Congrats. All Thank the best. You. Okay, thank you. Next, Yeah, you are audible, ma. Proceed, Lokesh. Proceed. Uh, good afternoon to one and all people here. I am Logan Adam and Daniel Lafter, VC from Anu Wallet Housing Science College. We are here to present the topic, the dark web. Here is the aspect of our mm -hmm. presentation. The dark web is the hidden collective of 
internet that is only accessible by a specialized web browser. It, it can be accessible only by a specialized web browser. It is used for keeping internet activity anonymous and private. Logan, your voice breaks. Yes. Just yes, check sir. your net, network mobile data. There's no clarity in your voice. No, no. yeah, it's not clear. clear. Hmm. It just uh, start soon. Yes, ma'am. I'm audible, ma'am. Yeah, now it's clear, pa. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Proceed, okay. proceed. Okay. Yeah, go to the abstract. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Proceed, pa. Okay, ma'am. After the dark web is the hidden collective of internet sites mm. only accessible by a specialized web browser. It can only accessible in specialized web browser. It is used for keeping internet activity anonymous and private, which can be helpful in both legal and illegal applications. It can be also helpful both in legal and illegal applications. This high barrier entry to the dark web exists to protect user identities. Mm. All activities and location and to maintain their anonymity. The Tor browser is the easiest way to access Tor and thus the dark web. It is available for free download and installation on the official website. It can also be installed in the official website. It also for free. Um, the next is, it is the dark web. And that you can internet and web, darknet, surface and web, deep web browser. Internet and web. Internet is the physical connection of all computers joined together across the world. Web, web is the software that runs on the physical internet. Darknet. Network built over a network is an overlay network. This is an diagram. Overlay network that uses onion routing is called darknet. Tor is the darknet that uses onion routing technology. A surface web versus deep web versus dark web. Surface web, uh, Google, YouTube, college website, etc. This is a surface web. Uh, deep web, uh, private emails, FB accounts, private database, and etc. Dark web, this is a dark web. Needs special software to access. Markets, TV oversight, hidden services. Uh, the next topic will be kind of continued by Dan Lal. Good afternoon, Nal. I am Dan Lal. The topic is onion routing. Uh, tor. Short form of the tor, the onion router. It's a free software for enabling anonymous bidirectional communication. Tor uses an onion routing to encrypt and send the information over the internet. It directs the internet traffic through a free worldwide volunteer network con consisting of a more than 7,000 relays nodes. Tor does not hide the fact that you are using Tor. Tor uses TCP, Transmission Communication Protocol. Instead of .com, .org, organization, .in, .net, it uses a dot onion. History of Tor. The idea of onion router was created by a US Naval Research Laboratory in the mid 1990s. Onion router was further developed by TARBA in 1997. First version of the Tor was developed on September 22, 2002. Yes, our uh, Tor code was uh, realized under the free license of August 13, 2004. Our uh, Tor budget was uh, created on December 2006. Conclusion Dark web and deep web are different. Uh, Tor can use it to browse normal internet to protect the privacy. Uh, anyone can uh, create or hide service and claim anything. Only browsers that are dark web. Very nice. You can use it involved in the illegal activities willing or unwillingly. Yes, is not legal or illegal in India. Why don't Why law in the entire dark web? Why don't agree working under government? 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Logan and your team. Yeah, you are saying the concept called dark web. It's a new concept. Just now only just now I heard the concept anyhow. Yeah, new concept. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, what do you want to convey the message? You ask the government or the public sectors to avoid the dark web because if you use the dark web means you can involved in some illegal activities. Am I right? That is the concept you want to convey. Yes, ma'am. Idea. Idea. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The yeah. government yeah. are uh, uh, that uh, they, they will uh, prohibit the dark web. Okay. So you uh, that's the concept uh, you want to say. Am I right? The dark web uses the onion routine okay. protocol. Yes, ma'am. And it's Whether, not. Uh, dark yes, tell me. Tell me. Is it easy to what? It's not easy to access a dark web as well as mom. Oh, it is very difficult to access a uh, dark web. Okay, my question is whether nowadays people are using the dark web. Yes, ma'am. Is it available nowadays? Yes, ma'am. It's a uh, legal. Yeah. It's legal and uh, available. He also using the dark. You also is it's a legal or illegal one? It's, it's illegal. Both, it's illegal, ma'am. Anyone please answer. Anyone please answer. It's actually illegal. It's illegal or illegal? Illegal. Illegal, ma'am. Uh, if illegal. it is illegal, then why you are you using it? You said, I am also using that one. So, illegal one. Yeah, but the government has to stop such kind of websites. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, can you tell me how the onion routing will work? Protocol. It's a protocol, no? Routing protocol. Ma'am, it's a server. Uh... It's a, it's a server, ma'am, that anyone cannot access a, uh, through a state IP address. It uses multiple IP addresses and uh, multiple technologies, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, onion routing is a server. It's not a protocol. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. I thought it's a protocol. Okay. Dark web is a, it's a website, but it's an illegal website. Uh, people are often using that is the extension dot onion, but you give a suggestion that government has to stop such kind of website. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, actually, illegal website means it contains what? Uh, Unwanted activities or what kind of things? Yes, are? All illegal activities, ma'am. Like a human traffic, or drugs, or guns, or all those things, ma'am. All illegal activities. Okay. Yes, Any goes. This is a nice suggestion. Okay. About the dark web. It's a new concept only. Fine, ma. Fine. Yeah. Actually, what is the, uh, you are giving some information only. Okay. Is there any yes, innovative idea you want to bring in dark web, or you no, want to maintain any security? Yes, there is security. It's, a, huh. it's a, not easy to break the security process in the doors or something in a dark web, ma'am. Okay. But uh, you should use a security purpose or good purpose, ma'am. Okay, okay. Any go, uh, we'll stop that one. Okay, so it's not a good one. Uh, good to access. Okay, ma'am. Congrats. Okay, fine. The new concept. Next. Next one is Istia Kagamad and Kumaran. Yes, you can start, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Two more students, ma'am. I think still two more students. Two students, ma'am. Istia yeah, Kagamad. Yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, proceed, ma'am. I am Istia from 3rd BC and my team member is Kumaran, ma'am. We are going to take topic about genetic algorithm in data mining. First, index of the topic, what we are going to present. Abstract, introduction, overview, and this one is really important, man. Six phases of genetic algorithm. <coughs> Application, advantage, disadvantage, conclusion. Man. Abstract. Genetic algorithm is a technique inspired by natural selection and used to solve various optimization problems and uses selection, crossover, and mutation to evolve operation of potential. Introduction. Genetic algorithm is a data mining, is an advanced method of data classification. Data classification incorporates two sites, data steps and classification step. 
the classification model is constructed in the class learning step and classification step that learning step and uh, um, predicts the output for the provided input overview a genetic algorithm is a flexible and powerful but requires careful selection of parameters and operators as well as effective termination criteria it has many application in various field cases like i said before important one initial population character fitness selection stop criteria as you can see at the end of the process it had condition like yes or no it if no means that the given solution is not optimal it goes back to character fitness and repeat the process until it gets optimal solution let us learn about the each phase in detail and with example and with simple terms initial population if the problem to find the shortest part between two points in a graph each chromosome can could represent a possible path between the points character fitness in a case of shortest path problem the function fitness could measure the length of each path and assign a higher fitness to shorter paths selection each individual is assigned probability of being selected based on fitness value the fitter individuals are more likely to be selected um, application if we talk about its application that are so many it takes longer time so we selected few of its application economics the uh, aircraft design data analysis transport data mining advantages is easy to understand as is based on the concept of natural selection impacts until multiple objective optimization adaptive search algorithm and also operates in noisy environment disadvantage is a time consuming and deals with a lot of computation improper imp implementation may lead to solution that is not optimal conclusion since this presentation provides to you with the basic idea of genetic algorithm and how it process to determine the optimal solution from the set of the solution yes some reference for it and thank you okay ma'am thank you kumaran and your team uh, first of all my suggestion to all the student your ppt preparation uh, is not good this is not a right way to prepare your ppt you are just copying the paragraph and pastes in the ppt this is not a good way okay ppt means four point means it will contain some bullets for giving some points only don't copy it in a paragraph and reading it okay this is my suggestion in future you follow that one ppt okay, means you are giving some bullet and points only okay don't uh, copy it and put it in a paragraph that is my suggestion uh, two or three students i i have noticed that is not right way of uh, doing ppt you must spend some spend some, some time and then do the ppt work okay anyhow you are giving a good information about the genetic algorithm kumaran can you tell me i am going to ask only one question i just say information only you are giving you take some problem and apply genetic algorithm and then give the result okay you are giving the information only kumaran yes ma'am can you tell me uh, genetic algorithm comes under whether it's a uh, classification or it's a prediction problem you said it will give optimized result it comes under classification yes. or prediction a uh, classification ma'am classification not a prediction one yes, okay where we are using this genetic algorithm any real time example can you give real time you already told no no ma'am so you have to help care ma'am it was a health care health care where we are using ma'am for uh, for find new medicines hmm. okay okay kumaran uh, study well about the genetic algorithm and then uh, take some problem and try to solve it uh, by applying this concept okay Okay, and then you know how to prepare a ppt also this is not this is very difficult to read if you prepare the ppt like that okay we are not yes, able to give more concept in that fine all the best kumaran thank you ma'am okay ma next next team mrnjay and samvel 
You can start. Ma'am, in the students are coming. So how many students are there, ma'am? Eight to present. Eight to present. Four more. Four more. Four more. Yes, ma'am. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, your name, ma'am? Samuel. Samuel. Okay, proceed, Samuel. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, why don't you uh, why don't you mention your name in the slide? Okay, proceed. Proceed, Samuel. My, my name is Samuel. My team okay. is Morgan Bell. We are going to present a paper on social impact of artificial intelligence. Have a look at this index. We are going to cover these topics. This, this chapter examines the potential social impact of artificial intelligence, focusing on areas such as job displacement, bias, privacy, changes in social interaction, healthcare, education, privacy, security, ethical concerns, accessibility, and environmental impact. Drawing on recent research and case studies, the chapter highlights the new questions. Approach to the development and implementation of new technology and calls for the development of development of policies and frameworks that promote ethical and responsible AI development. Introduction: Artificial intelligence is rapidly transforming many aspects of society and is also an important social, ethical, and economic questions. By providing an overview of the social impact of AI, this, this chapter aims to highlight the need for thoughtful and proactive approach to the development and implementation of AI technologies. Job As AI and automation become more widespread, there are, if you are concerned, many jobs will be will be replaced by automations, leading to unemployment and economic inequality. Biased in discrimination, AI systems are only by unbiased and is better the AI system is reflected. This can lead to unfair treatment in certain groups of Privacy concerns of the AI system become more powerful and can cause us more better. There are concerns about how this data will be distributed and who will use of the access to it. This can lead to issues of privacy and better security. Changes in social as the AI system become more friendly, the may change the needs, they will impact the interest. For example, it can be a virtual assistant, it become more common, leading to a huge amount of human interaction. Let's go. AI is the potential to improve the human interaction. Also, there are ethical concerns, for example, the uh, concerns about how AI will be used to make life and death decisions, and whether these decisions will be banned or not. As the AI system becomes more powerful, they are also become more effective, effective for this to cyber attacks. I 
social the social impact of ai is a careful consideration as the technology has the potential to bring innovation benefits to the business it is important to develop policies and frameworks that provide ethical and responsible ai development activities we we made this presentation by my friend this thank you yeah mm, thank you samvel actually you are giving some information about the impact of social okay uh, social impact of ai in what way ai uh, plays a role in social okay health care or some other things like that hello mundra samvel ஒருங் கணேஷ் மீட் யூர் மைக் கணேஷ் சாம்வேல் ஆர் லிசனிங் மேம் சாம்வேல் இஸ் இன் மை லேப்டாப் okay now samir my suggestion is first one is you have to the ppt is not good okay that is the first thing anyhow you are talking about the social impact of ai par we are using ai what are the drawbacks and all samir are you hearing okay fine samir and one thing i want to say you copy the work from some other papers am i right ஒர்க் <laughs> try to remove the things only and then in the content also you are giving a b s c so while in the public presentation and all you avoid such things you can copy the paper it is not bad but you have to avoid in this paper this work and all they compare so is a yeah, uh, by uh, how can i say um, crystal clear it uh, um, காப்பி பண்ணிருக்கீங்கன்னு தெரியுது எனக்கு crystal clear ah theriyudhu so and the mari terms ala konjam avoid pannikonga anyhow for ug student i appreciate your work anyhow within a short period you are doing some such, such kind of work and all so remove such things okay anyhow okay. it's a nice concept what is the role of ai in social impact of ai okay congrats samvel thank you thank you okay next one next team is next team is ahmed Arshik and KV Lokesh from 3rd BC. Yes, Ahmed. Really, UG students are doing good work. Okay, UG students are doing paper present. It's very, uh, really appreciate. Yes, Ahmed team, you can start. Uh, Mahalashmi, uh, shall we continue for tomorrow? Otherwise, that student, time is 4.30, going to 4.30. Shall we stop or...
Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, good evening. Your name, uh, Ahmed. Uh, I am Ahmed Rahman, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Proceed. Uh, Abe Dokesh and okay. Ashika. Okay, okay. Proceed, ma'am. Uh, so we are going to see about the metaverse. First of all, we see the abstraction. The metaverse so topic, is topic. Ma'am, topic. Tell me. What's your topic? Title, not topic. Title. My title is metaverse. Ma Yeah, I didn't see in the screen. No, not able to see. Metaverse. 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 Ah. Welcome to the world of metaverse. metaverse. Okay, that is your title. Yeah, yes, metaverse. Yes. Okay, you have to read the full title. Ah, huh? then only. Okay, okay. okay ma. Fine. Proceed, ma. Proceed. Okay. First, we are going to see the abstraction. Ah, I am not able to see your slide. Make it. Met metaverse is still meta. Proceed, proceed. Metaverse is rapidly evolving technology that is being developed by a range of companies and organizations, and it has potential to revolutionize the way we live, work, and play in digital age. Metaverse is a concept that envisions a vast, immersive virtual world where people can interact with each other and digital objects in a way. Now, in the world of metaverse, these are the topics. See few them. So. Now let us get into the topic. Here's come the Ashika Arman to give brief introduction. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Proceed, ma'am. Recent advances in technology are rapidly changing the way we interact with the physical world around us. Uh, Metaverse is a virtual shared space that everyone can access. Metaverse is the next step in the internet evolution. Metaverse. Metaverse is defined as a collection of technology gadgets. Metaverse connected to each other, like uh, IoT, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and uh, all the other tech industries, including medical area. Uh, it is a simulated digital environment that combines augmented reality as AR, virtual reality as VR. History of metaverse. <laughs> In this picture, timeline evolving in metaverse. The metaverse is not new. The the technology behind the latest immersive experiences has been building for years. Find out more about the history of metaverse. This is a concept of net de development of series scopes and a technology where you use the illustrations of depth. To create an image, this is the we are same concept used today in modern VR headsets. It started from year of 1989 by invented worldwide web, but unofficially it's all started back in 1838 when scientist Sir Charles Wheatstone outlined the concept of binocular vision, where you combine two images, one for each eye, uh, to to make a single 3D image. And the importance of metaverse will be continued by KV Location. Now I am going to tell about the importance of the metaverse. Sir, voice is not audible, ma. Once the voice increases, ah, yeah, now it, yeah, now it's audible, ma. Ah, okay, now sorry for the question. No problem. So, ah, uh, there are eight major reasons behind the industry. hype towards mm. the metaverse it could be the next internet it will be entirely democratized for all users a lot of the metaverse will be open source it will transform how we interact with the information it could transform every aspect of our lives it will have major implications of for accessibility the metaverse could advance to scientific research it can become the universal digital destination so in short what they uh, what is the importance means uh, the metaverse will be like next internet 
and it can be used by all the users in the world and also it it will interact with the information and transform every aspect of our lives and also it helps to do advanced scientific research uh, and the next slide will be explained by ashik ahmed ma'am okay some benefits of metaverse addressing a remote work challenge metaverse has a potential to address all existing challenge to remote work great tool for healthcare professionals a metaverse is a born tool for healthcare professionals and medical staff who are previously unable to visit patient due to geographical limitation making online games more exciting today most of the games were uh, coming in metaverse concept uh, so many leading companies were making in a game uh, like a metaverse metaverse concept ma'am providing the experience of virtual tours the tours are uh, the the traveling tours are making experience in meta metaverse concept monetization of benefits some are development exercise looking like ecosystem man top joint in metaverse these are the companies that in top in top joint in metaverse alphabet company meta company and uh, nvidia roblox snap microsoft adobe system these are uh, using metaverse in daily projects man features of metaverse will be continued by kv location future of metaverse is a simple as i told before uh, it will be used by every individual in the world uh, there is no interruption between the company company uh, 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 so most of the companies are trying to do the metaverse in uh, in their outlet uh, so the next slide will be explained by um, this is the conclusion ma'am before 15 years we don't know about youtube we didn't use youtube in daily life because we don't have proper gadgets to use youtube but today youtube plays a major role in day to life even 3 years kids to 60 years old guy using youtube they getting knowledge from youtube they getting entertainment and mostly most importantly they getting income in lakhs youtube also making in billions if my production is correct means metaverse will be will play a big role in future just imagine we can do practice without any injuries injuries by, by metaverse thank you ma'am yeah excellent ma'am nice presentation your voice pronunciation communication skills they are really really good super but only thank the drawback is i am not able to see the mobile screen font we have to increase it but excellent presentation thank you screen theriya thoda nalla actually i forgot to uh, switch on the auto roll that's why the ah, problem yes the problem font Sorry, of, uh, no issues but communication skills voice the presentation the ability excellent really super thank fun. you yeah some new concepts i came to know metaverse actually yes, it's a technology guys yes ma'am yes ma'am it is evolving yes ma'am evolving evolving yes, yeah where, what is the use of this metaverse give me in a single word Uh, uh, actually uh, when we are doing a welding uh, practically uh, it will g- uh, give some injury to us ma'am but while we using the vr technology uh, before uh, the injury is easily yeah. without any injuries ma'am okay it's, can... a, it's like a virtual reality augmented yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. reality okay am i can... right yes ma'am we can build a world what we want yes in yes, virtual that... reality ma'am yeah uh, shall i give the definition it is a connection between a physical and digital world through yes, some ma'am. application of different technology and program am i right that's yes, the ma'am. concept behind the metaverse yes, okay yes, so very soon we will uh, actually it's a existing one you're telling no yes, existing one people yes, are using one. the metaverse okay yeah what is the configuration the structure suppose i want to implement this metaverse i want the configuration hardware software and uh, i'm not hearing your voice now uh, what the software hardware configuration about to install this metaverse metaverse ma'am it will be uh, both, both both ma'am software and hardware are included rendu venum da enak adha enna hardware software platform enna nu kekkuren i am asking you the platform eppadi idha pannano enna venum idhukku coding edhula ezhudirukanga eppadi the vr box ma'am ah uh, and the software is a uh... Uh, use of virtual reality open source ma'am oest technologies and i think Inter-Vision. so i'm not sure about it ma'am we actually see this concept in iit madras ma'am uh, few yes, months yes. ago we are go- ah. we are going to the iit madras very uh, good hmm. their uh, professor used this concept and uh, he was developed a uh, company company 
that uh, i am i am actually impressed uh, sure. seeing that metaverse concept so i took that uh, concept and uh, explained it's a really really interesting one now uh, just uh, today now only i came to hear this concept and that really super okay, okay so try Thank to you. do some new innovations in this uh, concept approach the professor or study some materials research okay. papers and then do some new work and uh, implement the concepts and that excellent okay. students all the best guys really thank i got you. impressed with this uh, title okay thank you ma'am oh, oh fine thank you all the best next one thank you ma'am next the team is uh, bino mohan yugesh and daniel on iot maha darsal maha shall we stop ma'am ma'am very sorry ma'am second year teams are there two or just two teams three oh, three teams a... three it's very 10 minutes for me to sit ma'am huh. Yeah, why yeah, don't you join with the tomorrow session, please? They have their, uh, they have more teams, ma'am. That's why oh, no. I couldn't able to replay. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. Excuse this time. I'm not okay. able to okay. sit that much of time because from yeah, yeah. o'clock onwards, I'm sitting. Each no. team uh, just three minutes. Yeah. So you okay, are going to spend. Okay. Any now, I enjoyed the concert, but uh, my body condition is not. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Proceed, ma'am. Proceed, guys. Yes. Okay. Daniel, team, proceed now. ஒர்க்ஷன் <laughs> 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 what is iot the IoT, iot is known as internet of things it's a term used to describe a network of connected devices that can communicate with one another collect and um, perform tasks autonomously from from smart homes to self driving cars iot technology is changing the way we live and work and also it takes to it to the next level okay let's get into the introduction simply iot is a network of physical devices vehicles home appliances and other objects that are embedded with sensors softwares and connectivity and we allow them allowing them to collect and exchange data with each other over the internet next how iot works the iot work, works by connecting physical objects or things to the internet and enabling them to collect and exchange data with other devices and systems next uses of iot we are using the iot in various fields for example smartphones smartphones links and settings for monitoring and control of various systems and we also using it in industrial sites for early detection of equipment failures and reducing downtime and we also using it in healthcare agriculture fields and also transfer, transportation next we are going to see the privacy concerns the internet of things has the potential to bring numerous benefits to our daily lives but it also raises some significant security and privacy concerns iot devices which are connected to the internet are vulnerable to cyber attacks and making them potential targets for hackers and cyber criminals next we are going to see the future of iot the future of iot is bright as it continues to be adopted by more and more industries we can expect see more applications such as smart cities and health cares conclusion the iot is a powerful technology that is transforming the way we live and work it is important to ensure that the data is secure uh, that's all ma'am thank you yeah fine fine okay so actually you are giving some information about iot and where we are using and that uh, uh, the the area of applications also okay instead of things the presentation is also good instead of putting full theory you are using some diagrams also mm, it will be really attractive okay you, lokesh try to find out some more problems in iot and solve it okay yeah, security yeah, okay. or some other new sensors how to implement the real day to day activities with the help of the iot okay in okay, future try to implement such kind of problem yeah, okay okay ma'am. all Thank the best you. all the best next one next team is Tamil Arasan, Tamil Bharati, Venkatesan on cloud gaming services. Yes, you can proceed. Start. 
Hello, ma'am. Proceed, ma'am. Proceed. Cloud gaming services, okay. Fine, proceed. <clears throat> you share your screen now. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, good evening. Proceed, ma'am. And welcome to your presentation, ma'am. Let us introduce myself. My name is Tabana Sir from 2nd BCA. Ma'am? Yeah. Hearing, ma'am. Proceed. Let's start your yeah, presentation you about. Yeah, yeah, you proceed. Continue. Let's, let's start your presentation about cloud gaming, ma'am. Okay. Aspect. The cloud gaming you can see it on screen, ma'am. Yeah, I'll be able to see your screen. You proceed. What is cloud gaming? Cloud gaming is sometimes called gaming and demand gaming as a service as a game. Remote servers directly to users' devices are more colloquially. How cloud gaming works? You are basically playing a game remotely. Games are hosted on the remote services and stream on your devices. Now, Vengresh is going to talk about pros and cons. Hi, Hi ma'am. I'm Venkat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going talk about pros and cons of mobile. cloud gaming. The pros are basic hardware is required and it's very cost effective. So you doesn't need to buy any high performing consoles and all. And lesser storage is needed. The cons is um, faster internet is needed. And latency and lagging issues are there. And still it's a prototype, so some issues can be occur. The future of cloud gaming. Financially and technically it's strong. Um, financially it's going to be a billion dollar. Mute yourself, Rihanna. And technically, um, 5G is going to help and boom the market. No. No. These are the providers of cloud gaming. Okay. Stadia is quite popular, but it's discontinued. Okay. Cloud gaming means that the game doesn't need to download it and run on your computer. It literally means the computer game runs out on the internet in the cloud with the experience being streamed to the players. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, okay, fine, ma'am. Actually, you can play some games. Uh, no need to yeah. download the game in your uh, desktop or PC. You can yeah, directly play the game in the cloud. Am I right? That is the concept you want to convey? Yeah, ma'am, yeah, ma'am. Exactly. Okay, okay, yeah. So, you know, I uh, don't want to install the infrastructure, platform, software, all yeah, that. Directly, you can. Only have to. Uh, yes. You have to pay some amount. Get to sub providers. Yeah, uh, subscription is needed. Ma and then, uh, subscription, and then you can do. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's a nice kind of thing. So not only uh, uh, we want to work in the cloud, we can play the play the game play through in, uh, the cloud. cloud. Yeah, ma'am. Fine, ma nice concept. Okay, nice presentation. You, Your PPT is also good. Thank right. you. Next, next. Next team is Danush and team, cloud computer.
Maha really appreciate your students within a short period they did an excellent work and yes. they have that much bold enough to give the presentation really super thank you ma'am right yeah as you said it's a very short duration yeah, yeah. very very short period yeah but they have prepared something and they are ready to give the presentation really appreciate their effort yes ma'am was their work only yes sure sure yeah danush proceed danush ंग <laughs> Uh, nowadays every it companies uses the cloud computing and every it companies and government companies as they pay for cloud computing to store their database it is a great advantage to every it companies and uh, the life before cloud computing the life after cloud computing uh, the life before cloud computing the life after cloud computing before life uh, cloud computing every it companies and uh, government companies etc are using the hard disk to store their database now uh, it is easy to store the database uh, in hard disk but it but it not easy to store the hard disk bulk and bulk uh, cloud computing was published in 1960s um, but it became famous in uh, 2006 after cloud computing introduced uh, it is easy to store a database in cloud computing bulk and bulk okay ma'am ma'am myself parna i have said about the types of cloud computing ma'am yeah proceed There are three three types of cloud computing. There are public, private, and hybrid. Uh, public is anyone can access access from anywhere. It is an example for Google and Microsoft Azure. Private cloud computing is a, it is a model of infrastructure is dedicating it to a single single user. It is an example for Google Drive to store data securely. It can it can store data if lost or broken. We can we can still access files from other devices, ma'am. Uh, hybrid hybrid cloud computing it, it is a combination of both. private and public cloud uh, it is an example for facebook and instagram uh, and and cloud service method models ma'am there are three types of cloud service model one is saas uh, pas and iaas uh, saas stands for software as a service it is a way of delivering application over the internet as a service instilling of installing and maintaining maintaining software you simply access access the internet uh pas pas stand for platform as a service for complete development and deployment and running in the cloud with resources with enable to deliver everything from simple simple cloud based apps uh ias ias stand for infrastructure as a service it is a form of cloud computing that provide virtually computing to the so other internet uh these are the companies mostly uses these companies are using uh, cloud computing ma'am hcl infosys tata consulting tech magendra wipro um Uh, the cloud service providers companies ma'am amazon web service ibm google cloud uh, this is the 2023 top 10 cloud security companies ma'am i will give two example the example the sky i the best security service edge the sky i company is used to address the data web where it is stored and uh, place work the best snap platform it is used for monitoring detecting and security threats on cloud application and protecting from hacking uh conclusions uh, computing is re uh, recently new technological development that has the potential to have a great impact uh reference this are the reference to link to uh, in google ma thank you ma yes excellent ma i hope that you are preparing this is your own preparation i think so yeah ma am i right yeah, yeah in copy and all your own preparation you are giving a uh, nice information good information about the cloud computing what is cloud what are the uh, types and then what are the services provided aws amazon web services is also a interesting yes, one okay so Sorry, uh, this is short period yeah. so we can't explain it yeah uh, i know i know the problem but anyhow it's a informative one one day. really yeah. good yeah you have that confident to present that yeah. i appreciate you ma excellent ma all the best all the best next one thank you Uh, yes, ma'am. Last over, ma'am. Two more yes, things sir. that will be continued in the next session, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That's thank all, ma'am. Ma Sorry to say this. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for accepting our. Oh, my. it's my pleasure to join uh, this conference and also get some ideas, share the ideas given by the students, and I'm also share my ideas. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Maha, and that the Max Hod, ma'am, Mohan Valli also. Yes, my heartfelt thanks to all. Congratulate Thank all you. the best students. My bright, uh, my Thank best you. wishes for you. Thank Have you. a bright Thank future. You. Thank you, ma'am, for your suggestions and uh, improvements to be this Share, given to us. Yes. Session. Uh, close the session, Rihanna. One yeah. minute, ma'am. End of yeah. the session. Two. Rihanna, close uh, close the session. Mohan Valli, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So yeah, yeah, she said thank you. Okay. Okay. Shall I leave or any formal face? What up? Thanks. We are very glad. We are very glad that both the sessions went on so well with utmost dedication from the participants and in a dignified manner. Uh, the pending teams will be doing their presentations tomorrow. It is indeed an honor to every one of us. I thank the speakers of both the sessions, all the dignitaries, faculty members, and of course, fellow student members for making this conference a successful one. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Maha. 